name is Anurag. I'm going to be talking about ITO Labs today. Uh, we do video summarization, and our slogan is watch hours in minutes. So Rishabh has around eight years uh, research experience in uh, summarization, and I joined him to help apply his research in video summarization and also build a system around it. Uh, Mick helped with the product design, and he works closely with Manoj on business development and marketing. So the main problem we're trying to solve is video data explosion. According to the Zettabyte era report in 2016 by Cisco, it's going to take uh, 5 million years for you to go through the amount of video content flowing through the internet in just one month. Uh, GoPro cameras, surveillance cameras, drones, and also autonomous cars are going to be generating a ton of videos. So the main question is, how do we consume more content in less time? So, we've, so to solve this problem, we've built a unified summarization system. Uh, it tries to capture diverse and representative content in order to create a visual summary of any long video in a matter of minutes. We also do summarization on the entity level, such as objects, people, faces, and not only on the frames. So here's how it works. Um, a video is submitted to the pre-processing unit, which does a frame level feature extraction using deep models like scenes, objects, faces, etc. These features get stored in the features database. Uh, and then the video and the features get submitted to the summary system. Uh, the summaries we generate have three flavors. Uh, an extractive summary, which is an auto-generated video summary. A query summary, which is based on a user given input. And a concept summary, which is a summary over some high-level concept like scenes, objects. And here's a bucket list of algorithms we use. We use submodular functions since they very naturally express ideas like representativeness, diversity, and coverage. So representative functions uh, capture content from the main events in the video. Diversity functions capture uh, events from outliers and diverse events. And coverage functions express each frame as a set of concepts and try to find a summary across these concepts. And in the end, we end up with an extractive, a query, or a concept summary. So let's watch a quick video. So we've built an HTML video player, which serves as a front end uh, to our system. And here you're seeing an extractive summary over a 10 minute long video, where it's skipping to the main parts of the video. And here you're going to be seeing uh, the user enter a query for skyscrapers. And you can immediately see all the diverse skyscrapers in the uh, and then finally, we can go to the concept menu. And uh, under the summary tab, we can see a collection of all the major objects seen in the video, just like a word cloud. So the experiments we conducted try to show the minimum summary percentage needed to cover all key events. So if you look at the blue line, that's for surveillance videos. Uh, at around 20%, we can capture all key events without missing out on anything. So effectively, that means that you can watch a one hour long surveillance video in just 12 minutes. So we've done this analysis across several categories of videos, and we find that uh, by keeping the summary percentage 30%, we can express all key events uh, of any category. So here's our approach. We would like to take in a software as a service approach where we get videos from different kinds of sources, uh, and in the end, have it displayed uh, as a video uh, on the video player we've made. Um, and we're currently applying this approach and this technology in uh, the Ministry of Rural Development in India, as well as uh, the Indian Homeland Security, uh, and it's been showing great uh, results. So thank you very much. Uh, please do check us out at itolabs.com, uh, which has also our research paper, and I would be happy to answer any questions along with my friend, Richard. Okay, fantastic, well done. <laughs> Who wants to start off with questions? Yeah, got a mic right there. Hi, uh, Yale from Yahoo. H how do you define the representativeness? Um, so representative, uh, so for example, if you have a vi YouTube video which is edited content of certain scenes, uh, for example, a friend's video with different scenes, well, for a given scene, for a given shot, what's the most uh, effective frames or entities which represent that shot? So that's kind of how we define rep representativeness. Question. So if you just to add is basically you can think of it like a clustering. You want to pick the most representative centroids. So it, it turns out submodular functions kind of very naturally through a facility location function, they, they, they kind of capture notions of representation. So it seems, Tali from Google, um, it seems you thought about a lot about the context, but what about putting the frames in a visually pleasing way? It seems like very discontinuous summary of uh, um, sparse frames, is that correct? Or how do you maintain the coherency 
over the sequence of uh, frames in your summary? Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, so basically, right now, this is just a proof of concept. So you can see that it actually jumps, so it, sh it shows loading and so on. So ideally, <coughs> there are a couple of ways to handle that. We, we can take things like we can take shots to, to maintain continuity and basically have the, the, the elements for summarization as shots. So you get uh, basically summary at the level of various shots, and you can get a kind of coherent uh, summary through that. And there are also options that a user can actually select the granularity of each individual snippet. So basically, if you have a longer granularity snippet, you will have a more continuous kind of visually pleasing. So I think it depends really on the application. If a user wants to quickly get the important points in a video, um, maybe it's not important to have continuity, but if you want to create a promo video or something, it's, it's maybe important to have a, a, a kind of nice continuous video. Anybody else have a question? Yes. And a mic to your left. Will this work to, um, oh, uh, James from Zoots. Uh, do you think this would work to watch movies more quickly? Absolutely. So, so basically, obviously, for movies, you kind of have audio and you have text as well. So essentially, the whole idea of using this kind of a framework is you can kind of have multimodal input. You can take, you can take visual features, but you can also take text features and basically have a combined summarization that takes text and uh, visual inputs. And this is something we are actually working on right now. In fact, so. Fantastic. Round of applause, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.